The separation of church and state is nowhere to be found in the U.S. Constitution and furthermore is nowhere to be logically deduced from the U.S. Constitution, and I will attempt to prove that today. Let's start with the obvious. I am sure that many people right now are renting their clothes and weeping and gnashing teeth and pulling out their hair and saying, First Amendment! What about the First Amendment, you idiot? Well, the First Amendment states, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. That's the establishment clause I'm sure you're referring to. There's just one major, major problem with citing that clause to try to prove your point. Congress is not one of the states. Congress is the legislature of our national government. We have 50 states with 50 state legislatures, and the Establishment Clause does not apply to them. So, those of you who are following me with perhaps a more open mind, but are thinking critically, should be asking right now, well then, how come the Supreme Court said that there can be no mandatory prayer in public schools? Isn't that separation of church and state? Well, not necessarily. Allow me to explain. That court ruling in 1962 was not based on the Establishment Clause. It was not based on any part of the First Amendment. It was actually not based on anything directly relating to religion. That ruling was based on the 14th Amendment. It was based on the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was originally ratified after the Civil War to protect the rights of African Americans who were no longer slaves. It was meant to give them equal protection under the law, and that eventually led to the desegregation of public schools. It certainly follows from that logic that public schools may not discriminate against one religious group. Now, you might say, mandatory school prayers don't discriminate. After all, it was a non-denominational prayer, right? It was the Lord's Prayer. Well, clearly that's favoring Christianity over other religions. And while other religious groups were certainly allowed to go to public school, and I don't think they necessarily had to pray, the whole point is the school was propping up one religion over all others. So their ruling is perfectly logical. Prayer in public schools organized by the school favors one religion over another and therefore violates the Equal Protection Clause. Now, some of you have probably heard of the incorporation of the Bill of Rights, and maybe that's where your mind is going now. So let me explain this. The courts argued that based on the 14th Amendment, they could require the states to abide by the First Amendment and therefore not respect an establishment of religion. This soon led to the Lemon Test. And for a little while, the courts really were saying that there is a separation of church and state. But courts make mistakes. Let's not forget that. After all, remember Plessy versus Ferguson? Remember separate but equal? Well, the courts eventually realized the errors in their ways when they ruled Brown v. Board of Education desegregating public schools. And eventually, the courts would realize the error of the lemon test. The 14th Amendment requires equality. It doesn't require secularism. And eventually the courts would start to use what's called the neutrality test. The neutrality test goes more like this. States are allowed to fund religious organizations if that same funding is provided to non-religious organizations. For example, if a state wants to offer school vouchers so that parents can send their children to the school of their choice, they may use that state money to send their kids to a Catholic school. As long as they're also allowed to send their kids to a Protestant school or a Jewish school or a Muslim school or Hindu or a non-religious school, as long as those choices are there, then no one's equality is being violated. Therefore, the 14th Amendment does not require a strict separation of church and state. It only requires that all religious groups and non-religious groups be treated equally. The last thing I want to say about this is that when I was looking at Wikipedia, just kind of confirming some of my information here, I was very disappointed at what I found. And Wikipedia, when I looked up the lemon test, they kept citing the First Amendment over and over and over, the Establishment Clause over and over and over, 
Only briefly did they allude to the 14th Amendment, and they didn't even quote it. If the whole court case was based in reality on the 14th Amendment, how could they not even quote the part that's relevant? How could they not quote the Equal Protection Clause? I like the Wikipedia project. I love the idea of taking all of the basic knowledge in the world and putting it on one site so that we can all see it, and it's a nonprofit organization. So this is tough love for Wikipedia. Guys, get your act together. I think Wikipedia should seriously revise their article on the Lemon Test to explain that it's actually based on the 14th Amendment. I'm not saying ignore the first. I do realize that those judges kind of incorporated the First Amendment for a little while. But more importantly, you need an article on the neutrality test. It wasn't anywhere to be found. Nowhere could I find the neutrality test on Wikipedia. If you would like, I'll write it myself because I am a fan of your project. I like what you're trying to do and I would like to contribute. But it's really just unfair and biased of you to completely ignore the neutrality test considering that that's what the courts have been using for the last 20 or so years. Well, I hope this has been educational for everyone. I realize that I am not the final word on this, so if any of you would like to run a different line of logic by me, by all means, comments, videos, whatever.